Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're gonna talk about Ammo 2.0. What is Ammo 2.0, you ask? Well, it is DICE's plan moving forward to balance out ammo, grenades, and resupply mechanics for the support class and other stuff in Battlefield 1. The automatic resupply timer for grenades that was implemented in the last patch is part of this system, and it's further detailed in the post on Battlefield Live Reddit. And I encourage you guys to check the video description for a link to that post if you want to see all the information about Ammo 2.0 and see the discussion about it over there. So let me try and break down the whole concept of Ammo 2.0 as it is a very substantial change to the way that the game is going to be played in general. Not just the support class, but the way that everybody resupplies their gadgets. First of all, all the gadgets in the game will eventually resupply automatically without the need for the support class's ammo. This means all grenades, all anti-tank grenades, dynamite, AT rocket ammo, K-bullets, flare gun ammo, rifle, fire grenades, mines, trip mines, and more. Anything that's a gadget that has a depletable aspect to it will be automatically resupplied without the need of the support class. Now, some gadgets already have this auto resupply timer, such as the mortar and grenade launcher crossbow. Ammo crates will still resupply the basic ammunition of your primary and secondary weapons, but when it comes to gadgets, what they'll do is they will speed up the cooldown timer on the automatic resupply. And this speed up process could be as much as one third the time it takes to normally resupply a grenade or an AT rocket gun or dynamite or mines. Now they also wanna mess around with the concept of players spawning in with less than full ammo counts. I don't know if this will apply to the primary weapons, but they have mentioned it in regards to gadget ammo supply. So for example, an AT grenade or the AT rocket gun could have less than full ammo, and this would allow support classes to benefit you right away by bolstering your ammo supply. So there would be more need for the support class in that sense to try and max out your ammo capacity and your ability to fight off armor or other things in the game. They may also adopt cooldown timers that stay active through death as to prevent excessive use of them upon dying and respawning too quickly. So if you spam out all your anti-tank grenades and your normal grenade, then die and respawn as fast as you can, those grenades might not be available to you immediately. And this could stop some of the grenade spam. Now in essence, that kind of covers Ammo 2.0 overall. One thing I do want to clarify and that I know the developers want to clarify is that the automatic grenade respawn timer as is currently implemented in the game has been used uh, to sort of test and track the amount of grenade throws and deaths, which apparently are down 7% across the board. Now, they might not be down if you're playing on a map like Fort de Vaux, which really is grenade heavy and there's tons of action going on all the time. But in general, on the same maps that they tested before, the analytics indicate that there are less grenade deaths and less grenade throwing. So despite the game feeling like grenade spam is still just as bad as it's ever been or even worse, it is technically a little bit less worse than it normally is. My message to DICE, however, is that grenade spam needs to be taken way lower than 7%. And they've already responded saying that they're actually going to make the automatic grenade respawn timer even longer than it currently is. My further feedback to DICE again on this same point would be the grenade spam in Battlefield 1 is so much higher than it has been in any previous Battlefield game that I think they really need to reduce the quantity of grenades, spam, and killing potential of them by a huge factor. 7% is nothing. I'd say drop it by 50% and then start to balance from there. And the general sentiment I've seen on the forum so far about this post is that people just generally speaking don't want to die as much from grenades and mortars and all these other indirect fire bullshit weapons. They want the game to be more about shooting and more about skill. And I will absolutely back up that sentiment and say yes, whatever you can do dice to try and slow down the amount of grenade kills and mortar kills and all that kind of stuff would be a great push in the direction of skill in a game that feels more like a shooter. Now as for changing up every gadget in the game to have an auto resupply timer, this scares the crap out of me because uh, currently there's certain gadgets in the game that we talked about earlier that already have the auto resupply timer. 
The mortar, for example, I run with the air burst mortar on the support class and before just about any firefight or engagement I can get into, I can plop that mortar down, fire off all five rounds into the enemy, usually net a kill or two or really soften up the enemy and then go in for the kills. And by the time I'm ready for my next engagement, it's already resupplied and I can do the same thing over again. It feels incredibly overpowered and I really hate being the victim of this overly easy to use, no skill tactic. And if DICE can't balance some of the few gadgets that they have in the game that are already on an auto resupply timer, then why should I have any faith in their ability to balance every gadget being on an auto resupply timer? There's actually a bit of skill that comes out of having a finite amount of ammunition for your gadgets. If I'm playing the assault class and I use both my AT grenades against the tank and I miss those throws, well, that's it. Now I gotta go uh, try something else. I can't really go up against the tank anymore or I'm gonna have to find some ammo or support my team in a different way or go find a kit to pick up to try and find the tank not just hide behind some cover and wait for my grenade to recharge. This is going to be, I think, a big mistake to the teamwork element of the game as well. They say that this is supposed to benefit the support class overall, and I think they could certainly balance it in a way where the support class could get a lot of points from these changes, but people are gonna seek out the support class a lot less. If all your gadgets are resupplying automatically in between firefights and engagements, you're not going to have a huge amount of incentive to run over to the support class and try and get by their ammo crates on your own. Just like they balance tanks in Battlefield 1 with the auto repair feature and then also the ability to self repair your tank without leaving it has changed up tank strategy very significantly and made it far less about teamwork in the grand scheme of things. Sure it's still beneficial to have a dedicated repper which was a necessity in previous Battlefield games but in Battlefield 1 you never really see that dedicated repper. Every now and then I'll see it or somebody will help me out, but for the most part that tactic is nowhere near as popular as it used to be because it's not a necessity. I can see the same thing easily happening with support crates. If players know their gadgets are going to recharge automatically, they're going to be far less inclined to seek out an ammo crate, and I think the game will be less team oriented. And I know this is written in a way where a lot of the goals and concepts seem to suggest that this is somehow going to promote teamwork and promote the usefulness of the support class but I honestly think mentally and teamwork wise it's going to have the opposite effect on it regardless of if support classes are getting more points because they're distributing more ammo overall technically because players are going to spawn with less ammo I think players are going to seek out ammo far less and DICE has done a really poor job in Battlefield 1 of conveying the right way to play the game especially when it comes to point distribution and the suppression mechanics and all this stuff there's so much weird stuff under the hood the players don't understand how it works and they don't play the game in a way that makes sense based on the rules of the game because the rules are not conveyed in a clear manner. And I think going forward with Ammo 2.0 is going to have the exact same problems that the rest of the game has, which is a complex inner workings under the hood that nobody understands on the surface. So we're all just going to kind of run around and shoot at stuff like it's a normal everyday shooter. So DICE either has to figure out a way to better explain these mechanics through the user interface and let people know that they're resupplying ammo quicker and the huge benefits of being near a support class otherwise people are just gonna learn to realize that they don't need the support class to regen their ammo and we'll be fine without going over to ammo crates from here on out now anyway those are just my concerns and if you go over to the battlefield live reddit page and look at some of the other responses to this ammo 2.0 update there's a lot of other concerns that other people have posted there a lot of really well reasoned out arguments against the new system and how it's going to affect the game and this does put us in a very very interesting situation because DICE has presented their entire plan moving forward, their reasoning behind it, what they think it's going to do to the game, and the overwhelming response from the community is, we don't think this is going to work, we think it's going to hurt teamwork, we don't like it. Now if DICE continues to move forward and test this in CTE, and we find out that the community is still feeling the exact same way about the Ammo 2.0 changes, will DICE implement this change into the game? regardless, as they've done with the grenade resupply timers. 
People were against the concept in CTE, yet it was implemented in the game regardless. If the MO 2.0 update moves forward and moves ahead against what the community actually wants, it could be really disruptive to the overall community and the developers. I realize that the developers are in charge of their own game and they can do what they want, but there are a lot of people out there that are trying to push this game in a more skill, more teamwork oriented direction, and many of them are deeply involved with the CTE and giving feedback on the forums. If DICE disregards a lot of that player base, it could really start to push Battlefield further and further away from some of the core player base, and that really does make me worry about the future of this game. So I guess my closing thoughts of this video are really more of a message to DICE, since the community is already doing a great job of giving feedback on this forum and letting DICE know about what they want what they want to see in the game. DICE, please respect the community enough so that when you see overwhelming arguments against the change and good analytical breakdowns of why something is not going to work out, to maybe consider changing your plans for the future. You said you would do this in your post, and so I'm going to try and hold you to it. So I think I'm going to end this video on that note. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.